Hello everyone, Christy Rice here, author of Painterly Days and also Christy's Cutting Garden. Here I am showing you the spring version of this book. There are four in this series, spring, summer, winter, and fall. Um, the great thing about the books this time around, I believe, is that the structure and um, the basic format of the book is very much the same as Painterly Days. So we kept all of the things that we love, letter from the artist, lots of great content there, um, the techniques, painting tutorials, uh, but we uh, kept the things we love, but we changed a couple of things up as well, and we'll get into that a little bit into this flip through here. Um, all the great uh, flap out covers, uh, suggested materials in the back here. One thing you will notice across all four books you will see all the interior content on the covers is unique. Whereas in the last books, the interior content um, on the covers was the same from book to book. This time around, it's all unique. Uh, so that's really fun. Lots and lots and lots of painting tips and tricks uh, for you to explore. Each artwork has a section with a description, a painting tip, and uh, a narrative on being an artist. Uh, you'll notice the same as the last books, the pages tear out nicely. They won't fall out on you, but they will. when you do want them to come out, they will come out fairly easily. Love that peony there. Just taking a quick peek through. Here's a page I painted. You'll notice quickly, nothing on the back side, uh, which we love. Now, one big difference from last time with Painterly Days is that there's no artwork on the back. We decided to give you some free range there to explore on the back side. And remember, there will be no bleed through. So you can use those back sides for practice. So getting into the artwork here, a lot less all over patterns. Um, all of these artworks are inspired by traditional botanical illustration, vintage botanical illustrations. Uh, we do have some landscapes, the cottage there. Um, we have beautiful peonies, anemones, and strawberries. Um, I still have that great back flap out cover um, that allows you to prevent any paint from getting on your other pages like I have there. So be sure to use that. Uh, beautiful birds and lots of wreaths. And again, more landscapes, uh, critters. I love the wreaths, they're so fun. Um, irises with a beautiful landscape in the background. Azaleas in a beautiful glass container. Um, uh, lilacs, rhododendron, so fun. Um, Lily of the Valley, of course, one of my favorites, one of my favorites. Um, just some beautiful spring flowers there, crocus. Um, this is great, just a botanical butterfly poster with succulents in front. I love the bouquets as well. We did some bouquet illustrations this time around. They're super fun. A lot more white space on these pages. Um, this is the page that I'm going to uh, demo here for you. Uh, this time around, I'm using a tiny palette of mine. It's a Daniel Smith palette. Uh, I will definitely list out the colors for you in the description below so you can see what I'm using. And I'm also using this black velvet uh, round brush number six. Uh, it's just a great brush. I won't have to switch brushes at all throughout the entire painting experience. And also this small ceramic palette. You can get these on Amazon, guys. I love them. Not only are they super practical and useful, but they photograph really well. Uh, so for any of you who like to Instagram your work, they're just so pretty in photographs. So I'm going to get started here. I'm going right in with some juicy pigment on my brush, kind of 50-50 in terms of pigment to water. And I'm just starting to fill in these areas. These are cherry blossoms, um, but I'm not painting them pink. I feel like painting them purple. Uh, that's the great thing about these books. Um, just about creating in general, guys. Don't feel, you know, just committed to realistic colors. Have fun with it. If you feel like painting purple, paint purple by all means. Uh, so I went in with just juicy color, like I said, um, going, see my little finger trick there. You'll see me do that throughout all of my videos. I believe I do it when the uh, paint is just laid down. You can easily swoosh some paint away or back in line, so to speak, um, to make sure you have a clean look. Um, you don't necessarily need to do it with a paper towel. Just do it with a clean finger. Um, but I'm just going along using um, the tip and the broad edge of this brush. Uh, to fill in different areas. 
I'm allowing just the natural dark and light uh, and the way that the, the watercolor kind of falls onto the page be my contrast. So I'm not worrying too much about shadows and adding darker areas everywhere. I'm just letting the natural way that the color runs out as I make brush strokes create that depth. Continue on here, some leaves. Um, as I mentioned again, I will list out all these colors in the description below. I'm not going to name them here to confuse things, but I will definitely let you know um, what they are below. I'm just moving along. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, this is a really straightforward painting technique. I'm not even going to really call it a technique because you're just filling in color here. You're really just filling in. Um, and, and that can be extremely cathartic in the sense that you don't need to really stress or worry too much about what you're doing. Pulled in another palette here. This is another palette I made uh, up on my own. More Daniel Smith and also some green leaf blue um, handmade watercolors. Again, I will list that all out below. <clears throat> I'm adding in just some kind of yellow ochre in the centers here into some of the flowers. Now this page, guys, could, could be uh, overwhelming to some. There is a lot going on here. So um, don't, at the outset of your painting session, don't feel like you have to commit yourself to finishing the entire page. You do not, you really don't. And what is my, my mantra with painting? If you're getting bored, um, move on to an area in the painting that you're excited about. Um, so I went right to the sun. I felt like I wanted to see that yellow on the page, so I added it there. I always say, forget rules, forget right, remember joy. And that is really the mantra of my painting style. I certainly do have techniques that I use um, you know, kind of classical um, approaches that I've learned over the years. However, I don't let those tie me down. Um, so getting back to the painting here, I'm adding in some really pretty green um, just with the tip of that number six brush and letting what happens just happen. I did then float in a tiny, tiny bit of a, a violet there for some shading. And now I'm going into the background grass area. And one thing I urge you to do with these books, again, so you don't get overwhelmed, is as you're painting, um, or even before you're painting, sit down and really look at the artwork and really figure out, okay, what's going on here? Because again, these illustrations are really detailed. They're done in kind of the classic adult coloring book style where there are a lot of tiny little areas and shapes to fill in. So it's great to just give yourself that moment, even if it's 30 seconds or a minute, to just get acquainted with what's on the page. Don't feel like you have to dive right in because you could easily miss, oh wow, look at that. Yeah, there is background there that really is meant to probably be grass. So what I'm doing now is I'm going in, wetting the page a little bit with a clean brush, um, a clean wet brush, wetting it a bit, and then dotting some color over those wet areas. If you've watched any of my videos before, um, you'll, you know that I use that technique all the time. It's a great kind of whimsical way to get color on the page quickly. I definitely urge you to use a round brush when you're starting or the dagger. Um, because, you know, there's, there's brights and different brushes out there, different kinds, I won't get into it. Uh, the round brushes or the dagger give you a lot of options. A round brush and a dagger, you can use the broad side. You can see here how I'm using the point sometimes to get into the little nooks and crannies. Other times I'm using the broad edge of the brush and pressing down harder uh, to really get bigger strokes. So I encourage you to start out with a round brush or that, that dagger that I talk about all the time. And just continuing on here, and you'll notice I'm not sticking with the same color. Um, I first started floating in that yellow ochre color. Um, now I'm down into kind of an emerald green. Um, the, the point is, is just if you want them to blend together, just make sure you're going back in between the colors when they're still wet. So where that yellow there met the green, you'll notice I went back in with a clean brush and I kind of blended them together with a little bit of just clean water on my brush. 
So you don't have to keep going through with the same color everywhere, everywhere. Um, and honestly, I wouldn't recommend that you do that anyway because you're going to get kind of a flat, ho-hum look. Um, the point of watercolor, again, in my opinion, with my approach, is to let the wild quality of it show through. Try not to disguise the wild quality of it. Um, let the colors burst into one another. Uh, let the water really work on the page. Um, yeah. And so continuing on here, <clears throat> and you'll notice as you're painting the background here, and there is a method to my madness for choosing to paint the background or the grass along the sides of this pathway, because it's revealing to me very quickly kind of the form and the structure of the rest of the composition. So you'll notice as I'm painting here, the trunk of the trees becoming more obvious, the structure of the branches and the blooms up in, in the, the upper third of the pages becoming more obvious. Um, the deer, of course, jumped right out at us, um, as you probably noticed there in the bottom right. So, um, you know, deciding to strategically paint that background area first um, is is just that it's on purpose it's it's a strategy to to help myself along with this painting I'm just continuing on here adding in the color and you've probably noticed and maybe you've stopped and paused and I encourage you to do that as you watch these videos um, you've probably noticed like I'll like right there a lay down color and it almost looks like the brush is doing the shading for me and the way that you do that is just by wetting your full the full length of your br your bristles on your brush wet the entire length of it but then just add the color to the tip of the brush so that when you lay down color starting with the tip of your brush the color that hits the page that's closest to the tip is going to be the darkest but then it will naturally flood out when the rest of your brush hits the page because the brush is wet. So I would recommend uh, stopping here, rewinding, listening to that description again, uh, because it's important for you. It's a great technique knowing how to load your brush. So painting isn't just about knowing the colors to use, knowing how to mix colors. You guys all know how I feel about mixing colors and getting obsessed with it. I'm not a big fan. I really pull directly from the palette often. Painting isn't about all these rules and composition and so on and so forth. But part of it is knowing how to load the paint on your brush. And again, you'll see here with what I'm doing with the pathway, the color that I'm laying down at the tip of my brush is a little bit darker here because I have a wet brush that I've loaded on the tip only with color. And you'll see it here again. There we go. So try out that technique. Again, wet your entire brush from the base of the bristles right to the tip, get it nice and wet, and then go in, don't blot that wet brush, go right into the color on your palette and just load the tip. And then play around with uh, painting on the page and seeing how that color lays down and seeing how you will get that natural gradient effect just from one brush stroke with that technique. Just continuing along on the path here. The areas that I just painted um, in the last you know 20 seconds are still very much wet and that's a good thing and that's another uh, sign of quality watercolor paper is that it dries the paint slowly and there's a reason for that it gives you time to work into the area see I'm going back in here into wet areas and I'm able to blend in darker bits of watercolor I'm able to make areas that I feel maybe are too splotchy I'm able to blend them with you know water on a clean brush just blend them a little bit and remember I've talked about this before um, with any watercolor paper you want to use a light touch you don't want to dig into the paper you don't want to scrub and scrub and scrub you want to use a light light touch it's going to maintain the quality of your watercolor paper surface and it's also going to maintain a certain freshness to the look of your brush stroke something happens when you continue to to brush and stroke and brush and stroke over an area. You lose that kind of immediacy of that beautiful first stroke of watercolor. So 
keep an eye on, as you're painting, keep an eye on um, the pressure that you're laying down on your brush onto the paper. I'm adding in some directional lines here that are not part of the illustration. This is something that you may want to experiment with on a scrap piece of paper. Don't feel like you have to do it right away on your own uh, because it is very much kind of a freehand thing. Um, but you might want to take a look at that again. Rewind, take a look again. I just added some brush strokes following the contours of that pathway. Um, now I'm going in and adding into um, those cute little turtles at the bottom. And don't panic. You might have noticed that I laid down the first bit of green on that first turtle and I got too close to a wet area on the pathway and it bled together a little bit. And all I did was I cleaned off my brush, got it nice, nice and clean, and I went ahead and scooped up some of that color. I scooped it back towards the turtle from whence it came and blotted my brush, washed my brush again, and scooped again from the green area that bled out into the pathway back towards the turtle and ultimately got all of that green that bled out into my pathway, I got it back to where it belonged using kind of that, that lifting, that scooping technique with your brush. I'm gonna add a little touch into the tree trunk here. I'm, pretty, I'm really laying down some strong color um, and, and that's okay. I can go back in with a clean brush like I am now and blend out, soften areas. Um, so if you're painting, you're going along, you're loving life, everything looks great, you're feeling good about it, and you just lay down this wicked strong brush stroke of color, don't panic. Don't panic, just go back in with a, queen, a clean, sopping wet brush um, and lift out some of that color, blot some of that wet, that moisture onto the area of the dark brush stroke you just put down and lift it back up and blot with a paper towel. Notice how I'm using that palette. It's a small little ceramic palette, but I'm using it very minimally because again, I don't feel like you have to spend your life mixing colors. Definitely not a purist in that regard. I really, you know, a lot of painters love to work with maybe only, you know, 10 or 15 pigments and they mix everything. And I don't, I like to work with a lot of pigments that are ready for me, things that I love, things that I'm familiar with and just have at it and let the paint mix on the page. Don't be afraid of that. Going back in with kind of a brighter pink here. And don't forget, I will let you know the source and the names of all these colors. And just continuing to work through this page. These pages are pretty intense. Um, even though the new Christie's Cutting Garden books are smaller, um, they are eight and a half by 11. Uh, instead of nine by 12, they're a little bit smaller. Uh, these pages take a while and I call that a win because I personally believe that's great because you're getting a lot of practice and you can, you know, spend a whole week on one page if you want. So don't feel guilty if you're like halfway through the page and you're like, I'm kind of bored with this. Don't feel guilty. Either stop, go onto the back of the page and do some practice brush strokes, start another page. Don't hold yourself, especially with painting, guys. This is supposed to be fun. Remember, art for joy's sake. This is supposed to be fun and relaxing. Don't hold yourself to all of these rules and supposed tos and what if I don't and all of that garbage. Just do what you feel like you wanna do. We have all those responsibilities elsewhere in our life. Don't try to rein yourself in when it comes to painting in these books or painting period. I'm just going back in with some greens, kind of a green gold into the leaves. I'm using that finger trick a lot here. And uh, what's happening when you see me use that finger trick in my books is I typically, I'm a very expressive painter and I typically am going outside the lines. And so trying to rein myself back in just a little, I know I'm not supposed to rein myself in too much, but I use that finger trick to kind of uh, pull back in little areas where I've gone outside the lines. 
And one thing I wanted to mention, I don't know if you guys have had a look, if you search Painterly Days or Christie's Cutting Garden on Instagram, um, you guys have to check out what people are doing with these pages. Lots of fun stuff, cards of course, and um, just really cool artwork. So I would really encourage you to check that out. Uh, I've had so much fun today with this demo. Please send me all your questions. Thanks guys.